So this is my rotary welding table. Um, this thing's genesis goes way back to my old YouTube channel, which was Stephen Outdoors. I, I, um, I used to be a gun channel, um, but then the great YouTube apocalypse of 82 happened and, well, my channel was basically deleted in its infancy. But anyway, um, that channel basically became dead in the water. And so I started this one which turned out to be a good move. This has served me rather well, apart from a few issues. I just need to remember how to get this thing apart. I didn't have any means of making keyways or anything, so this, was, this thing has been driven by that little bit of weld down inside the keyway all this time. I often joke that, to anyone who asks, that the internals of this were held together with duct tape and zippy ties, and well, um, I wasn't kidding. The motor here is literally held on by this bracket, which was zippy tied in place. But it goes to show you really don't have to know what you're doing to be able to make something that works. Uh, most of these components I found in industrial scrap bins. So the motor, uh, the power supply, and the gearbox, they were all free. The only thing that I actually bought was this speed controller. And this is just a cheap, run-of-the-mill eBay 12 24 volt speed controller. Um, and they're pretty foolproof. Anyway, I want to recycle most of these parts because they're still, they still work just fine. Back in the days when I was silicon bronze welding everything. With all the old parts removed, I sort of figured the most expedient way to build this new rotary welding table was to laser cut it out of wood. So I put the Falcon 2 back to work. The 22 watt laser made short work of this 9mm thick plywood. The only thing was the smoke. It was pretty intense, though it did make for a good light show. And I would also look into getting plywood that is designed to be laser cut. The glues that they use don't give off any uh, toxins. There were quite a few parts to process as they came off the laser cutter and so I spent the afternoon gluing and screwing the bits together that I could. I'll spare you the tedious nature of that but just know that I made quite a mess with the wood glue. So the parts are coming together. Um, still got a fair bit more to cut. While that's happening, I'm going to turn my attention to the chuck. So something that won't come across in the camera is just how heavy this thing. This is solid cast iron and it's actually... Yeah. I would say that's easily uh, 20 kilos just by feel. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of weight to be supported on a wooden structure, so I'm... <laughs> time will tell. I mean, heck, they used to make aeroplanes out of wood, so surely. Surely, surely. With enough parts laser cut, I could now get some real dimensions for the shaft that would support the chuck. 
it was time to liberate the old aluminium flywheel that I was using as a platen. It was a press fit. Yeah, that's moving it. This old piece of scrap already had an M10 thread cut in the end of it, but it was filled with wasp nests, so I uh, grabbed the cheapest tap that I owned and cleaned it out with that. I can't let artisan makes have all the fun with the hacksaw on YouTube. Now this shaft is perhaps a little bit looser than I'd like, but in thinking about it, this is going to come in and out a lot. So my first go at this, I, I really screwed it up. Be quite fun. So I machined a little bit more off because I still had plenty of length to play with and I gave myself a better fitting shoulder. That's nice there. And now to drive it, I've made this washer. And that is a really nice fit. And there's just a little bit of clearance between this retaining washer and the shaft. So when I do this up nice and tight, friction is going to pull it all together. And that's what's going to drive the chuck. Mm. So the next thing I need to do is turn this little off cut into a locating jig, if you like. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. Don't judge me for my poor choices. The process I went with for bolting the plate to the chuck was to get one hole completely drilled and tapped. I would then bolt the plate down and drill and tap the rest of them. This actually worked rather well.
all of the wooden components are now done and I can actually start assembling this thing, so yeah. The whole design for this rotary welding table really evolved around the gearbox. Basically all the other dimensions were built around it and thankfully it all came together and fitted rather well. The desktop laser cutter was the unseen star of this show though. It was just in the background working away whilst I did all the machining and it really was a labour saving device. I'm very happy I've got it. The nice thing about this design is I was able to laser cut locating holes that sort of aligned through all the parts. So all I had to do was get it roughly in place and drive a screw or a nail through and it just made sure that everything was where it needed to be. The little laser engraver was also useful in that I could mark out the opening for the speed controller display and the switches and buttons and things. It didn't have enough power to actually cut the material, but it certainly was able to mark it clear enough that I could easily cut it. At this point I'm just crushing the wood slightly. I reckon as time goes on I'll just nip these up because the wood's going to compress a bit over time. I do have some plates, some steel plates that I could reinforce this with um, that I'm not using for the current time. I'm just going to try it. Just the wood. 
The bottom plate is the access cover, if you like. This is how you get access to the internals. Any other panel, if I left it unscrewed or glued, it'll really compromise the strength, and you'd only ever get access to like one side. Having the bottom as the, the access port cover um, just makes the most sense. The final stage of this build was to give me somewhere to hook an earth lead and I basically copied what I did on the first one which was to run a copper braid around the aluminium pulley where the belt would have run and hook it up to this little post which has an M8 hole tapped in the top that accepts a cap head screw that can just clamp down on the copper braid and keep it tensioned. The system worked really well and it never gave me any problems on the old one. So I thought, well, I'll use that again. Electricians everywhere are just getting triggered. That'll get it. That's... There we go. Nice. Oh. So I can hear what you're saying. Steve, why would you build a rotary welding table out of wood? Like, it's gonna catch fire. And I, I agree with you, it, it very well could if I was doing, you know, spray arc MIG welding at 250 amps all day long. It, it absolutely would catch fire, but that's not why I built this. I do a lot of TIG welding and TIG welding of small parts. Small production runs of maybe between 10 to 50, sometimes 100 parts. And that's really what this is for. Uh, mostly TIG welding. So wood at that point really isn't going to be a problem. TIG welding is a very clean welding process that doesn't create any spatter or sparks <laughs> unless you run out of gas. So yeah, wood's going to be just fine. Some of the features of this that probably aren't so obvious is the hand rest also doubles as a foot. Now I can do horizontal work. Something I couldn't do with the old system because the chuck was more or less just sitting on the platinum, 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 the spinny thing, kept in the center with a little stub. So this is a huge upgrade. Not only, this is a heaps bigger chuck, this is a 200 millimeter uh, chuck, and it's actually the chuck that came with my original lathe, the big Royale. I've always wanted to build a rotary table for this chuck, 
because it was it was in pretty bad condition when I got it. It wasn't very concentric and it only has these um, jaws. This is a good use for it. The only thing I really need to do is build a, a bit of a tail support that'll go out that way. I've got some rollers for that and I'll do that off camera. But more or less, this is done. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's a little bit rough and ready. I like that sort of thing. I, I always looked at the things that my my grandparents used to build because they couldn't afford to buy it. So they would build it. And a lot of the stuff they made was very much like this. I really had that in mind when I was building this. It's a little bit sentimental for me. So I think that's it. The gearbox in this is a 10 to one. So this is very much uh, the same. <laughs> the internals to this are very similar to this old Tony's rotary welding table. If you wanna see how to build a real rotary table, go watch his video. He does a really nice job. But apart from that, guys, thanks for watching and let me know what you think. Time will tell how it lasts and whether or not I'll need to reinforce the wood with some steel plates, but we'll cross that bridge if we get to it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. So, some of you may have noticed a new machine in the background and here it is, I've upgraded my folder. Uh, I sold my old folder and guillotine to make room for this. This is one of those funny situations where I've sold two smaller machines and bought two very large machines and I've actually ended up with more room. I, I feel like that's breaking the laws of physics, but somehow that's how that's worked out. I guess the plasma, the CNC plasma table used to be here and it was a rather small machine in a really large area, but just the room that it took up, it really wasn't the best use of space. So it's gone downstairs to the lower area where the blacksmithing table is. And this has taken its place. The really nice thing is the three phase outlet that the plasma cutter ran on was just in the right position to power this thing. So it's worked out really great. Um, it was one heck of a day getting it in. It took us a full day, Jonathan and myself, to get it in position, but now that it's here, it's here, and hopefully I'll never have to move it again <laughs> unless I outgrow this workshop. It's a three meter long bed, segmented fingers. Um, it's missing a few fingers, but I've got the, the bits for that uh, so I can actually make some new fingers if I ever need them. Though it's not very often you deal with three meter long sheet. I mean, I'm sure it could, it could happen, but most of the stuff I deal with is 2400 by 12. Um, I think I mentioned three millimeter is its maximum thickness folding capacity which is pretty beefy, uh, four millimeter alley and two millimeter stainless steel. That's what the guy said. And uh, from memory, that's, that's about right from the one we used to use back where I did my apprenticeship. <laughs> Fun fact, this is the same folder I had when I was an apprentice. So it's pretty cool. I feel like things are coming full circle in a roundabout way. Do not put fingers under clamping bar. It hurts. I'm not kidding, that's what it says. Yeah, unfortunately I, I can't find any marking on it whatsoever to, to find out who made it. Uh, but it came with a spare set of blades and it actually cuts really nice. For, for looking a bit old and rough, it, it leaves hardly any burr on the material and so far the little bits that I've used it, I'm really happy with it. It's a bit cramped around the back, but there's just enough room to come in and lay a full sheet down that way and if we needed to work on it long ways there's all that opening there now that we can just bring um yeah it should work well that's my little workshop update thank you everyone for watching and i'll see you in the next one